Gonna go and buy pizza. Love you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Newspeaks. I'm Vincent Zulowski. I'm Natalia Mini. I'm Connor Naylor. And I'm Rachel Watkins Daly. So, we've never not had the internet, never not had mobile phones, never had to post a letter. Almost every message that we send from this day on communication um, over the internet, over the phone, um, has been archived in a place so that potentially it can be stored to look up for red flags on each of us. Okay, so let's take a look at who's tracking what we're doing online. So, let's say we start on Google and then go on to Facebook. Suddenly, all of these organisations are tracking what we're doing. You read your emails and even more organisations start tracking. That's pretty scary. It's really a surveillance planet. I mean, the United States, in partnership with GCHQ, has created the largest single you know, surveillance apparatus the world has ever known, a mass surveillance apparatus. I like to think that young people and people should be able to have the freedom to make their own decisions and be where they are and be responsible and I don't like the idea of people knowing where you are and what you're doing at all times. It terrifies me. At what point is our generation going to say that governments have crossed the line in terms of surveillance? Now when you look at Samsung televisions, they've released in the press that you shouldn't be having a private conversation inside your own home because there are microphones inside the television that are constantly recording what you say. And the GCHQ or the NSA could potentially, if they're not already doing it, infiltrate the, those machines and spy on you in the privacy of your own home. GCHQ is a government communication headquarters, so it's the British, British government's arm of intelligence gathering via sort of digital means. So it's basically monitoring communications come in and out of the out of the UK. The UK's sister of the NSA, which is the National Security Agency. Yes, the American yeah. version of what we yeah. have. People don't realise that it's used as a monitoring system. People just think that that's the new great thing, that I can yeah. change my channel just with my voice. Everything you think is a neat electronic device, like OnStar or something like that, in your car. This is OnStar. How may I help you? It's powerful technology that connects you to a real person 24 hours a day. That's nice, yeah, but they can also turn it on and listen to you. If you're using uh, Skype, mm -hmm. uh, gee, that can be reversed. They can look at you too. Where is, where is safe? Like literally, where can you where can you have a private conversation anymore? Like, like, even phone. in your living room, it's like mm -hmm. the Xbox One, the, X, the new Xbox One, mm -hmm. the camera is on all the time. You, there is literally nowhere you can go. You go outside, you got CCTV cameras and police. You go inside your own house, and you got cameras and microphones. We're so dependent on like almost like. A monopoly of technology comes between Apple and Samsung and yeah, Nintendo Sony, Toshiba, whatever. People are always going to want want, want the next the next mm -hmm. phase of a TV, yeah, or the next yeah, phase yeah. of a games console, and they can they can put whatever the hell they damn well like in it. Exactly. On this thing, for instance, I've got an iPad One, right? It's so old now that they won't let me have the next iOS, which means eventually all everything's going to start dying on it. Like, our companies are capable of killing your technology Absolutely. from a so, distance, yeah. just with their market, just with their corporate policy, so that you. Pay and ultimately, to have yourself no one under cares. Surveillance. As well. And it's ultimately, ridiculous. it's for your own good. It's yeah. for your own security. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we know where you are, and therefore we can track you and protect you. Yeah. We'll keep you safe yeah. from your living room. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's, it goes against human rights when you think about it. Our, our global movements right now. I mean, they're they're movements by the young, mm. and that's what's creating change. If you look at Hong Kong right now, if you look at you know, if you look at movements like Occupying the Arab Spring, they're movements of, of young people. So in, in Occupy, actually, there are countless cases of, of students being, being monitored. Um, you had police officers in New York infiltrating the protests, going undercover, um, posing as uh, organizers. You had uh, cases of um, people being followed, uh, of um, being watched, of, um, of the press being blocked from filming. So what exactly gets us flagged. If, if like a student, for instance, is doing a bit of research on Al-Shabaab, 
or any other sort of like Islamic uh, fundamentalist group, you you find yourself on a website that's affiliated with that, you are going to move up. You're going to move yeah. higher up the suspicion list. Like if you find yourself for any reason on WikiLeaks, if you're curious about what Edward Snowden was up to, or if you want to learn about um, Julian Assange or or the other whistleblowers, Chelsea Manning, like you find yourself on any one of these websites, you're going to move up a list. It's hard to say that there are actually anybody who's who's safe from these systems. In order to figure out what to get from that worldwide communications, you had to graph it. We called graphing is building relationships, social network. It's like reconstructing the social network of everybody communicating in the world. Who were, who were you last seen with? And who are your friends? And who have you talked to lately? And what purchases are you making? When you assemble all of this, I can get to find out an extraordinary amount of information about you. I can show your electronic life over time. Everything you did, if I had the GPS on it, I'd have everything you did, everywhere you were, were when you did it. There's a bigger picture. Um, what it's about, you know, is it, is it stopping terrorism? David Cameron, calling for greater powers, said... The attacks in Paris once again demonstrated the scale of the terrorist threat that we face and the need to have robust powers through our intelligence and security agencies and policing in order to keep our people safe. So the men behind the Charlie Hebdo murders were on watch lists already. These organisations knew that these people were suspicious. They knew that they could be a threat. The same thing goes for the Boston bombers or the Lee Rigby murder. You know, after the Charlie Hebdo incident, Edward Snowden, the man who proved to the world the extent of these surveillance programmes in the US, UK and beyond, said... France passed one of the most intrusive, expansive surveillance laws in all of Europe last year, and it didn't stop the attack. If we're missing things, like the Boston Marathon bombings, where all of these mass surveillance systems, every domestic dragnet in the world, didn't reveal guys that the Russian intelligence service told us about by name, is that really the best way to protect our country? If it's only about terrorism, why are the United States and the United Kingdom spying on the United Nations, looking into global warming conferences, looking into allied countries such as Germany, and looking into the work of journalism? I don't think these are easy answers. I really don't. My fear is what can this information be used for, for what other purposes? If all of that information is reassembled simply by profiling and searches, what could they know about you? And what happens if it's misidentified? Or what happens if I draw different conclusions from the data when in fact it's not true? I mean, data can be manipulated. I mean, there's, I, I'm a living case of that where the government framed me. They wanted the data to be a certain way for the convenience of charging me as a criminal. And they, so I was data, I was literally data framed. I mean, there's also the fear that you don't look up these things now because you don't want to yeah. look up, Absolutely. you don't want to move up that list. And that's very, mm. that's definitely yeah. a terrifying yeah. thing. Because I mean, having an uneducated population is probably the worst thing. The key thing about information is how powerful it is. Right. It means that you can use fear to generate any kind of political program you want. If you want another yeah. war to seize another country, to invade another country, to seize whatever assets they have, it's they're out to bomb us. They're out to kill us. Yeah, All that stuff. And it works. So what do you say to someone who might say... It's an old cliche. I've got nothing to hide. Nothing fraud of. Well, there's an element of truth in that, in the sense that if you've never done anything yeah. and never said anything... <laughs> <laughs> then you have nothing to fear. True. If you're completely mute, then you then it's great. I mean, you have yeah. nothing whatsoever to worry about. And if you think everything is wonderful, and we live in the best of all possible worlds, they love you. Mm -hmm. uh, they're hardly going to worry about yeah. you. But if you say something like, "What a jerk that politician was," yeah. suddenly you're interesting. Yeah. And once the red <laughs> lights go on on the panel, then you know, oh. Yeah, yeah. Where do you draw the line between your own individual freedom and living in a place which has um, security? None of us, I think, worried about targeted surveillance against people that in a court you could easily argue are dangerous people. They bomb people before yeah. they've killed people. They believe that all women should be struck off or something yeah. horrible. You know, you think, well, we can deal with people like that. You target them. You go for them and make sure that they don't commit the crimes that you're worried about. Yeah. But why are they doing you? I mean, in 1972 and 73, 
the Echelon Project, were, they were picking up telephone conversations, telex things, faxes. They were picking up all that stuff and storing it for, what, five minutes? Because they didn't have the memory. Now they've got it for 400 years. Yeah. yeah. And that's all information about you. And if you think they know every single detail of your life, that's pretty scary. Yeah. I think the fear of mass surveillance is so much more of a kind of intellectual fear. Whereas rather than a physical fear, yeah. terrorism is like, I don't want to die. Yeah. And that's a very that's easy fear. Well. To, yeah, it's an easy fear to understand. If I'm sat next to an unattended bag on a train, mm. there is a part of me that goes, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> and, <laughs> and wants to move away from that bag. If I'm stood next to a camera, unless I'm doing something I think might be illegal or doing something wrong, I'm not going, oh, no. It's like, yeah, it's fear of the known. We say terrorism is a threat to our freedom. Terrorism is a threat to our lives, mm. but in terms of the the the, scale, the the intensity and immediacy of that threat, we are our freedom and our way of life is more threatened by what our own governments are doing in response to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like lobsters in boiling water, right? You're slowly the heat's turning up slowly enough that you don't notice how bloody hot it's getting. Mm -hmm. Separate from surveillance and separate from governments wanting to control it or in partnership with corporations, or corporations wanting to slice us and dice us and then sell it back to us, right? The technologies that are available to young people now allow us to connect in ways we've never been able to do before. I get, I get great hope from that in terms of what will the, the tomorrow's generation do with it today. Just know what those what those tripwires are. Just know what those challenges are when you tread in the digital world. As you can imagine, this is a very complex story. If you want to find out more about mass surveillance, about how it affects journalists, how it affects whistleblowers, how it affects you at home, and how you can protect yourself on the internet, please watch our other videos from News Peaks Live. I'm Rachel. I'm Connor. I'm Natalia. I'm Vincent. And this has been News Peaks. Please share this video and comment below.